We're back? We're back. We're back! We're back! We're back! <laughs> All oh, right. Man. Woo! Oh, oh man. I didn't want to lose this. Oh, no, bro. No, we got to keep that around. We got to keep that safe. Oh, oh man. Woo. Oh, man, it's good to be get back. And I can't believe we made it on time. Like, oh, yeah. Like, wait, we made it on time, right? Mm. Like, Con well, Connor, we made it on time, right? We, um, well, it's, uh, How bad is it? It's a big day. A month or two, we're a little late. Nah, right, we'll just do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Cleaning Clean montage. Episode. Well, we should probably, you know, do do our IDs. Oh yeah. Hi, I'm Aaron Wamba Jamba Radke. And I am Connor Past Tense Neil. It's been a while. It's been a while. And yep. this is the Untitled Weekly Show. The show where we talk about what we want and you like it. And if you do <laughs> We gotta grease the old mind gears. So, so Connor. Those are the mind gears cranking. Today. 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 Mm-hmm. Today. But yesterday. Oh, but tomorrow. But tomorrow. We are going to finally wrap up season one. Season one. Of season the Untitled one, Weekly one, Show. Season one, season, one, season one. We definitely did this already. Well, In 2021. To give a little backstory, Connor and I, we have often referred to ourselves as filmmakers throughout the show. And uh, we thought once that- Once or twice. Once or twice. And we've given some <laughs> insights on some broad picture stuff. Man, why am I still wearing these? I, I don't need these anymore. Yet, you mean. Let's get these out of here. I think it's about time we gave you some truly practical, boots on the ground style information. Because... Boots on the ground. We're talking boots on the ground, not sandals on the counter. We've seen, you know, behind the scenes filmmaking and a lot of people are like, oh, you do this and do that. But a lot of these guides are like, oh, I'm, you know, you can be a good filmmaker with anything. It just so happens I have a camera that costs more than both of your kidneys. How much do your kidneys cost? How much your kidneys cost? I'm not, I'm not at liberty to disclose that information. No, that's true. Filmmaking always seems like it's prohibitive because you need a lot of money to make good stuff. And we are here to say no. No. Because we're making good stuff and we're broke. Yeah. So. We got sandals for hands. Yeah, we had to sell, we had to sell his hands to, to pay for rent. Oh. We're here to give you the tactical filmmaking guide. The sandals on the counter. Sandals on the counter, filmmaking 101. Does that catch you up to speed? That caught me up to speed. All right. And the speed is about this fast. Talk about pre-production. So, pre-production. But don't use that chunk. Oh, okay. So pre-production is a thing that a lot of people kind of forget about. It's probably more important when you don't have a budget than if you do have a budget. Because if you don't have a budget, you usually won't have the funding to go back and fix a lot of mistakes. So the big thing outside of, if you're gonna do a film, make sure you have a good story. And I think we've talked a lot about good story and what does and does not make good story already. Mm -hmm. We've done that. So I'm not gonna touch base on that. But what I am gonna say is plan out production. You need storyboard, shot lists, and I wrote these too big, and location scouting. You gotta dot your T's and cross your I's. More important than those. Oh, oh it's script. All of these have one thing in common. 
You have a plan. You have to think. You have to think. Mm. And but if you don't have a plan, production's gonna be a nightmare. But Aaron, I don't like to think. Well, then why are you a human being? Hmm, that wasn't my choice. I had put in for a koala, but... Planning makes for better films. It does. Makes for better stories. And it makes things go smoother, so a... <clears throat> onset especially. Onset especially. Shot list and storyboard, depending on what you're doing, they can be about the same thing sometimes. If you're the one filming or the director and you know exactly what you want in your head for the shot list, it can be done without a storyboard or with a very minimal stick figure storyboard. Mm -hmm. On the All Bleed film, I went to the location with my phone and did a, a had a couple people come with me and did a, a video storyboard essentially where I just had people do everything that, that I had in my head. So we had a video to look at with people who weren't in makeup and without the camera and audio. That's actually a pretty good idea in my opinion. The video storyboard, if you have access to some people and like a phone, and the location, that helps a lot. Because then you can see if things work before you're there. Just so you know, where is your camera placed, where are your actors placed, and where are your essential props placed? Yes. And if you know those things, and you kind of know how it's supposed to look, production, when you're on set, on location, is going to be so much easier. Oh, okay, you want to talk about production? Production. This. Production. Now, now that you know what you want, we need a team. And if you're low budget, you're not gonna have a 500 person crew. No. No, you, you do ever need a crew. Want a 500 person crew. A skeleton crew of people who you know can be way more efficient than a thousand people that you don't can know. Be. Can be. Can be. You have to pick the right people. You have to pick the right skeletons. So, first and foremost, you. You! The director. Are you the director, though? Sometimes it might not be the best option for you, the person writing, to be the director. That is true. But most of the time, if you're doing a real low budget thing, and it's just you and some friends or some people who are also interested in film, you're probably the director. Yeah, I was gonna say, let's face it, this is small time. Yeah. This is... We're talking... Backyard with a camcorder. Backyard with a camcorder. Sandals on the counter. You are the director. Sometimes you're just the writer. Sometimes you're just the director. But in most small small scale cases, you are, are both. you are both. So, a director. What do you need, Connor, what as do you a director? Need to direct. You gotta be willing to work with people well. Oh yeah. You got, like like, you know, especially if you're low budget, you're either going to be not paying your actors at all, or not paying them very much, and sometimes be you might aware just be of the pizza. That. Exactly, be aware of that, and be like, they're taking their time out of their day, week, year to be in this film. I, for one, maybe because they want experience, maybe they they just like you know they like the process of making videos, maybe they. You know, they just wanted to help because they were like, oh, my friend wants to make a movie. I want to help with that. Be considerate. And then, and then obviously actors. Well, I was going to say the director also needs vision. He, oh, he needs vision. Yes. Yes. You need to know what you're, what you're filming. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you need to work well with others. You need vision and you need communication. The I'd say those are the three yeah, things you yeah. need. The director needs to know what in the world you're filming. If, if, he, if he's running around being like, I don't know what's going on and I don't want anyone to know what's going on, yeah. you're going to have a bad You film. need at least one person to have an idea of what's going on and that person, if it's just one, needs to be the director. Uh -huh. So that they can know whether or not they're getting what they need for the mm -hmm. movie. The next, actors. Actors! You know, if you're not on a budget, sometimes you just pick people who you know. Yeah. And sometimes they're real good, and sometimes they could be better. But you work with what you got. Mm -hmm. So, I think I mentioned this in a previous episode, but when you're looking for actors, um, especially if you don't have the means to pay them, or if your only way of paying them for their time is you get them food. Pizza time. The, Im the important thing of an actor is 
Um, first, they need to be able to act. Um, B, hopefully they listen to you mm -hmm. and, you know, take criticism. And C, hopefully they're patient. And most of the times they're not going to get all three. If you get all three, keep that person. Yeah. But if you only had to pick two, pick the latter two. Mm -hmm. Because if you got a guy who can act but doesn't listen to you, or you got a guy who can act and isn't patient with you, you're going to be out of luck. Because, go let's so face well. it, even if you have a plan, things go wrong on a set. Always. Things take time. Other people you might have. Maybe you have an audio guy. If you have a whole guy dedicated to audio, tell me who he is. So what does an audio guy need? An audio guy needs strong arms. The boom pole. The boom pole. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my own prop. Thankfully, people who have abandoned our studio left us this kind piece of hunk of wood. Hunk of wood. So let's say this is my boom pole. Gotta make sure that they, A, again, listen to you. B, they have stamina and they can stay quiet. Yes. Because there's gonna be a lot of times where he's just gonna be sitting here doing this, just standing there. And he can't move. He can't move. Because if he moves, he'll be in shot or they'll see his shadow or something. And if you can get a person to be dedicated to audio, that is fantastic. And that makes everything infinitely easier. For most of the stuff that I've done in the past, I have been, well, I've been all four of these things yep. in some regard. Now that now that Aaron and I are both working on things, yep. we have a much better system of, well, it's much easier to do these two or these two rather than all three. Or, or these two. Or these two. It's easier to do two of these three things than, than to do the, all three. To do all three. The key is you want the director to be able to have his brain completely free from any technical issues. So that he is just in the story and he's figuring out what he needs. When you're doing all three of these things, if you're in the middle of a really good take and the camera's battery dies, Suddenly you have to switch your brain to, I need to figure out how to get power to this thing or find another battery, instead of thinking about the filming. Or the creative, this, any creative decisions kind yes. of take a back seat. Or the other way around is you get too engrossed in the creative mm -hmm. and you neglect all the technical issues that you need. Yes, exactly. All right. Um, it, grip. Grip, oh, okay. Grip, grip, you know, honestly, Grip is the thing that me personally, I have had the most people help with. Grip is a broad term in the film industry that we use. And they are essentially people who do a lot of the more physical labor on a set. Setting up stands, um, moving things around. And honestly, having a grip is a lifesaver. It is because a grip is essentially their job is to make sure that everyone else can kind of focus on their job. The grip is there to make sure that the camera guy doesn't have to worry about running out of batteries. The audio guy doesn't have to worry about cards or anything. Mm -hmm. The director doesn't have to worry about any technical things. This is the ideal situation, mind you, but we should yeah. all strive for this anyway. Uh, most of the time when I have a, a quote-unquote grip, it is somebody who is also acting, who is not in the particular scene. I think my mic might have died. Let me check. It died. <laughs> Technical issue. Technical issues. This is a great example of what we're talking about. Now see, that's an example of something that I, I turned the, the lav mic on. The lav mic was like, I got full battery. And if I had waited a few more seconds, it would have been like, I don't have full battery. Help. 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 I need somebody help. Not just anybody. All right, snap. There you go. The more people who pull weight on a shoot, the faster it goes. Faster and easier. Yes. So, what can you use when it comes to gear? Because Your mom's iPhone. Your mom's iPhone. I was, gear is a question that a lot of people have, and even I had. I always thought, it's like, oh, I need this 
camera that costs like a good chunk of my college tuition. Honestly, today, that couldn't be farther from the truth. Oh, uh, yeah, like, ridiculous. Do you have a new iPhone? Your camera's probably pretty great. If you have the ability to save up some money to get something, I'd suggest the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Yes. It's a, cra it's a crazy good camera. Mm -hmm. You can get some, some decent lenses for it. Maybe we'll, we'll put some links for some, yeah. some ideas in the description. I would say, yeah, you use that for a lot of your cinematic stuff, and let's say, and maybe a GoPro. There's a GoPro's couple issues with like power and things, but there's work around. There's work around, and you're still spending less money than if you yes. were to like, jump the gun and buy a red buy dragon. A red or a... First camera have... I ever shot on was this big old beast that shot straight onto VHS tapes. It was ridiculous. But it worked. But it worked. Now, on a budget, audio is very important. Audio is very important. You can get these little packs that essentially you just put a micro SD card and a couple of AA batteries. And they record to it. And yeah. they record to the, the SD card. Mm. Log packs, those are, you can get those fairly cheap. The other thing you can get, invest in a, in a decent boom mic. Because mm -hmm. those sound great. Um, and you get an XLR cable. You can get an XLR cable that runs full-size XLR to the uh, Blackmagic Pocket or other things. If you're using your phone, there's a lot of phone options. There's, there's shotgun mics you can get that go straight into your phone. There's lav mics that go straight into your phone. Mm -hmm. I think I think the moral of you the story. You can do a lot with a good boom. I think the moral of the story is if you have, if you do have money, to invest, keep you with your phone for camera, and invest in some audio. Lights, lights are important too. You can get by with no lights for no budget. Um, start with reflectors. Reflectors, if you're like outside and you have like a $20 reflector, you can get a lot just by mm -hmm. using that. Work lights. Work lights can work if you get them. But right now, LED lights are getting so cheap nowadays. Mm -hmm. you, can get, you can get little LED lights like this that put off RGB color for 20 bucks now. There, there's, there's some pretty cheap lights you can get out there that put out a decent amount of light. And if, especially if you have the, like the Pocket 4K, it has a dual, mm -hmm. dual native ISO, which if you, Yes, lights are important because, it's, like, if you're using your phone, your phone can shoot in some pretty dark places if it's a more recent phone, but, like, it's gonna look grainy. So the more light that you can get, mm -hmm. it, it, so, it, lights make things look better. All right, honestly, I think that's, when it comes that's, to actually that's, filming, yeah. that's, that's the gear you need. That's about all you need, really. I mean, limitations do breed creativity. They do, you have to be inventive. All right. Now you have a team, you have a plan, you have a team, and you have gear. Now, now on set. On set. You plan a time to get there. So my suggestion is, I never used to do this. I would tell everybody to arrive when I arrived. Don't do that. If you have people who are not involved in setting up for a shot, have them arrive like a half an hour later because you'll get there, you'll be scrambling around to get stuff ready to go. And you don't want people just standing around being like, this is boring, I don't get to do anything. Figure out who needs to be there that day. If somebody is not in a scene that you're shooting on a particular day, don't have them come. I made that mistake the hard way several times. Planning. Plan, it, it, it all comes back to planning. planning. Now, when you get there and you're ready to film, so you got an angle where you're looking at a dude. Now you get the camera set up, you're looking at him, now he's talking, now somebody else is talking. Now back to him, now somebody else. The best way to do a scene like this, keep the camera on this dude until you are done with that angle. Because if you just keep going back and forth, it's gonna take forever with the readjusting everything. It's a pretty obvious thing, <laughs> but that was a mistake I made early on. Figuring out exactly what angles you need so that you can shoot, move the camera as little as possible, it, it just it just saves time because you're not constantly having to adjust everything. Mm -hmm. To basically just because all that gets kind of summed up in this one idea of a be courteous with the people on your team on your crew. Mm -hmm. Be courteous and respectful of their time because they're lending it to you. Be efficient with it. Simultaneously, you've got to stick to your plan, mm -hmm. but you also got to be flexible. Yeah. If you're doing something that's like a really cool shot and you're like, this is going to be amazing and the shot is taking like an hour, 
sorry to say. Give up on the shot, move on. Sometimes, sometimes like you have an idea in your head and you're like, this is so cool, it'd be amazing. But if you just, if it's just not happening and it's taken way too long, figure a workaround or in pre-production have a, if this shot does not work, this is what we'll do instead. Because it's better to have the backup shot that does the, it has the same story element to it, but doesn't look terrible than it is to have a shot that just doesn't turn out and that kind of ruins the film. If you're getting shots and let's say like taking a long time on a shot, mm -hmm. let's say you do, you make a guy do a thing, you get a shot and it's done. And you're like, all right, let's do it again. And then you do it again and you do it again. And it's the 11th time doing this shot. And you're like, oh no, it needs to be perfect. No, it doesn't. And again, this is working under the assumption that you are in our kind of scenario. Yeah, low you, budget. Low budget. Um, you, the people who are on your crew are your friends mm -hmm. and people who have just volunteered their time. And you have very limited time on location because yep. you are not only using their free time, but your free time. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, okay, that's that's what I'm gonna put down, which is the most important thing I think for being on set to make it so that other people aren't frustrated and you're not frustrated and you're not like, it's not all of a sudden 11 o'clock when you told them they'd be done shooting by six. You keep things moving. I try, I don't go above five takes when I'm doing a specific shot. Mm -hmm. Because let's say I've done it four times and I'm like, all right, I should have a take that's good and I have a couple other safety takes there as well. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the buffer. Five is the magic number. And this also goes with pre-production. Uh, on, on the all bleed film, I did a I did a, a sheet where I, I had, a, it was a call sheet, which I mean, this is, this is what you're supposed to do if you're doing films. Mm -hmm. You got. You got who's gonna be there, you got when people are arriving, you got when people are getting it. For that particular shoot, we had to have people arrive at certain times to get makeup so that they could be on set with their makeup at the right time. And then we had, all right, for this blunt, this chunk of time, we're working on these couple of shots. For this hour, we're working on this scene. And you can get even more detail where you're like, all right, this 10 minute period, we're working on this shot. This 10 minute period, we're working on this shot. All right, we're gonna work on this shot for this long. And if we're not done with this shot, after this amount of time, or this scene after this amount of time, we're either gonna have to start cutting into the next shot or scene, or we're just gonna have to wrap this one up. And it kind of depends on how important each scene is. Know what's important. Know what's important, that's another part. Know what's important. And I think uh, another thing is like allocating the right time. It's like, yeah. it is okay to work on a shot for a long time if it's an important shot. Yeah. Like if, 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 if there are shots that are the crux of a film. Also, charge your batteries before the night before. Make sure all your gear is together the night before. Just have things ready to go so that when the actors arrive, you can just start going. I mean, do we want to talk about editing, or is that going to be a separate thing? No, I was, I was, I was just talking about, broadly, talk about post. In our scenario of, you know, small crew, no budget, that kind of stick, you are probably also You're the also editor. You're also the editor, yes. Unless you have a buddy who knows how to edit. Unless you have a buddy. But in more... And that buddy's name is Timothy. Timothy. Do Give yourself been. a deadline. Keep working on stuff, because post is where it all comes together. Yep. Um, post is where you realize all the mistakes you made beforehand and were too busy to figure it out. Post is hard. Post is. Granted, I really enjoy post. I, yeah, it's a blast. You're sitting there trying to figure out how do I make all this stuff that I shot a cohesive story. Editing's the hard part. I mean, it's all the hard part. It's all hard. It's all hard. It's all going to take a lot no of work. Filmmaking is hard. It takes a lot of thinking. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of work. It takes a lot of cooperation from a bunch of different people. What is the thing that you need to make a film. You need passion and dedication. Yeah, you really do. You need passion and dedication because this is a hard thing to do. The way my method of shooting used to be on our old channel and with other stuff, it was we take a camera out and we just run around and do whatever the crap we want. No script, no nothing. We're just, just doing stuff. And the problem with just doing stuff is then when I'm editing, I either am like, 
It's stupid, I don't make it. There's the, I actually edit it, and then there's the, I just forget about it. Because it didn't have any meaning. Like, it wasn't like a story that I was wanting to tell. It was just nonsense. Mm -hmm. If you have the passion, and you have the dedication. It's fun. It is fun for us. It's stressful, it's a lot of work, but it's fun. Reproduction, plan, assemble, assemble, gear, production. Production, post. Post and post. It's gonna get three. Do this because you love it, not for the money. That's Second, it. when it comes to this whole process of Pre, post, and, or pre production and post production. A wise man once told me that when you make a movie, you will always make three movies at once. There's the movie you write, there's the movie you shoot, and there's the movie you edit. And the edit is what the people see. Yep. Things change, and it's not always gonna be quite exactly what's in your head. But it's gonna be close if you can help it. Filmmakers don't finish movies. We release movies. Do what you can, follow your deadline. The biggest problem with Timothy is that Timothy is never gonna be done. So you gotta shank Timothy. Don't just, shank Timothy. No, I mean, you just walk up behind him and just just, just do one of these numbers just with your fingers right into his, his love handles. Oh. And then, <laughs> then Timothy, That'll get a man to stop. That'll get him to stop editing and just export. All right. Zach Lane's is calling me again. No. Oh. Zach Land. Hello. 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 Yeah, you're on the Untitled oh, Weekly I Show. About the, I forgot about the weekly show. Wait, you guys are back? <laughs> I mean, oh. yeah, a little bit. Things happened. I, you know, that's what I heard. You, you'll you'll I heard see. <laughs> you will see. You'll see. You will see. I guess we finally finished season one of the Untitled Weekly Show. It's been done. It's been done. It's been um, did. Connor, what time is it now? Like, it's uh, 5.39. But but like, what time is it? Oh, you know, it's uh... Oh, uh, yeah. So give it some time and you'll see some pretty cool content some soon. some cool stuff. Oh, is this how we're leaving? I mean... Oh, God. I don't... All right. Hold on, I need these. These were on loan. These were on loan. All right, are we ready?